Hello everyone, back to you to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video, which takes us to around the 24th of March. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at the 7th speed at the end of the video, of course, for uh, the next um, four weeks, taking us into April. And we'll begin with all of the latest in terms of what's happening with the stratospheric warming we've been talking about in videos over the past couple of days and is on the way for next week. So I'll get on with all of that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video released today was the weekend forecast, as always on a Saturday, your weekend look ahead. Um, so it'll be quite an interesting week's weather, actually. A lot of contrasting uh, weather going on in the weekend, particularly in terms of temperature, will become very mild down in the south for a time around the middle of the week, but by the end of the week, winter will be back. And of course, we're going to talk about that in today's video update as well. But we're going to begin with what's happening in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over North Pole. This is from the JMA, uh, showing how temperatures have been performing through this season uh, versus uh, uh, seasonal average. So the grey line is the trend line. Uh, and at this time of year, of course, temperatures are lifting up. They reach their peak in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA in uh, the summer months, dates in monthly periods down there on the bottom of the chart. The black line shows that uh, through most of this uh, season, we have had a cold and average temperature at 10 HPA in the uh, top of the stratosphere, particularly cold uh, around there in December, but just generally trending cold and average throughout, except for this one sort of warming episode that, be that uh, began and happened in the early part of uh, February, wasn't sustained, and we dropped down to be cold and average again later in February. Where we are right now, though, is getting very close to the grey line, getting very close to the trend line now. Temperatures lifting up to around minus 50 at uh, 10 HPA in the stratosphere. Uh, so beginning to uh, become less cold at 10 HPA, but if you go lower down to 30 HPA, you'll see that actually that is still exceptionally cold. Look how far below the grey line that black line is. So remember, the grey line is a trend line at this point of year into the middle of March. We should be around there, somewhere around minus uh, 55, where we actually are is down here somewhere under minus 75 so exceptionally cold temperatures at 30 hp and of course that's lower down closer to the uh, troposphere exceptionally cold temperatures at uh, 30 hpa and a continuation of where we've been throughout the winter really most of the winter temperature at 30 hpa was under minus 80 we have lifted up from that a little bit but only to um like minus 77 or so so still really really cold with the temperature at 30 hpa becoming less cold and close to average though at 10 HPA. Now, of course, we're talking about this warming of the stratosphere that's going to be occurring over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, so, uh, bring up to date with that. Uh, so, this is the latest GFS temperature forecast for 10 HPA. These are the blue colors, of course, the cold temperatures at 10 HPA, but we've got at the moment they are reaching near average, though. Um, now, in around a couple of days' time, you're going to start to see warming beginning to develop across northeast of parts of America and the North Atlantic and uh, pushing in towards the, uh, into the Arctic. So this um, warming of stratosphere actually begins very, very shortly now. We'll start kicking off very shortly, and then it will intensify through the course of next week. So in around a week's time, got the red colours turning up there, uh, that's temperatures lifting up to around 0 degrees at uh, 10 HPA. That's a very significant warming of stratosphere. We call it a sudden stratospheric warming when the temperature lifts up by many, many degrees over a short space of time. And on this scale... Uh, we're going to see the black line. If that forecast comes off, because it may not do, may not quite reach that level, but if that um, forecast comes off, we will see this black line doing something a little bit like that, going virtually uh, to the top of the chart, going virtually off the chart. Always thought very dramatic when the sun and stratospheric warmings, warmings happen. Uh, happen and uh, yes, that's a very significant warming of the stratosphere that's going on uh, in around a week's time.
Uh, moving into more extended range, we keep those uh, burning tanks red colours going for a couple more days. By around day 10, just begin to ease off because we can't maintain that very high level of temperature at 10 HPA all that long. We can only maintain it for a few days, so temperature begins to lower them. But uh, generally staying significantly uh, above average with temperature 10 HPA right way through to the end of March then. And of course at that point it'll be a case of watching what's going on in the troposphere, see whether there are any impacts from this warming of stratosphere down in the troposphere where uh, weather is taking place. This is from the University of Berlin, showing the ECMDF forecast from last night. So again, uh, 10 HBA. Today we've got those cold blue colours there. We hopefully have the North Pole itself highlighted here with this black X just there. So yes, cold temperatures at uh, 10 HBA still today. In uh, a week's time though, these are the temperatures that we're seeing. Again, very significant warming of the stratosphere being forecast for around a week's time. We've got those uh, bright orange, if not red colours appearing on the temperature scale going to around minus 10. So that's just a few degrees lower in terms of this uh, of this warming of the stratosphere with the ECM compared to GFS. Nevertheless, they're more or less in line with one another. They are showing a very significant uh, very significant uh, stratospheric warming in around a week's time. And then up to 240 hours, day 10, uh, which yesterday was 23rd of March, of course. Uh, we'll sort of lower the temperature down. We can't maintain that very intense level of temperature all that long, but nevertheless, still very significantly uh, above average of the temperatures then, somewhere around minus 30 to minus 20, certainly uh, above average. Going lower down to 30 HPA, it's the same story as it has been over the past few days at the moment, and we already established this. Temperatures are very cold with those deep blue colours at 30 HPA, uh, but in 10 days' time, we see the first signs of warming appearing uh, closer to the troposphere so it is turning a bit warmer just here and over here as well the intensity of the blue colors are lifting up as well so temperatures are beginning to rise at 30 hpa nowhere near as warm as they are at 10 hpa but temperatures are starting to rise 30 hpa as well so it's also on course very significant warming of the stratosphere that will in the end uh lead us to the end of this year's polar vortex it may take a few weeks so it's on to be an immediate thing to get rid of the polar vortex of the tropics. It's a very, very intense and strong polar vortex that we've had this winter already established out, of course, over the past few months. Um, the zonal winds have been at record breaking levels. It really has been an extraordinarily powerful polar vortex. So it will take a little while take a little while for the polar vortex to um, sort of uh, weaken and then eventually die but it will do so by the time it's through to May and June uh, the polar vortex will go away for a few weeks anyway and then of course it will return in uh, August as temperatures start to get colder again over the Arctic and the North Pole and then the polar vortex for like winter 2020, uh, 20, 2021, will begin to power up from around August. But for a few weeks through sort of early to mid-summer, polar vortex will go away. And this uh, sun and stratosphere warrant is coming up in around a week's time. That will play a very, very uh, significant part in the end of this season's polar vortex. So the only question we don't know is whether this sun and stratosphere warming will lead us to northern blocking in uh, the place of um, polar vortex. And we won't know that for a few weeks. There's a bit of a time lag between getting a sun stratospheric warming and then getting a tropospheric response. Sometimes you never get a tropospheric response to a sudden stratospheric warming in terms of northern blocking. So that is all very much um, uh, to be revealed in the coming weeks. We'll be keeping updated about that uh, sun stratospheric warming, of course, and any impacts that we do see uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Section temperature is looking like this. This is provisional up to yesterday, 13th of March. We're standing at 6.4. It's an anomaly of just over one degree above average. So hasn't really felt that mild, has it, this March? But yes, it is a little bit above average still. That may tick up a bit more, actually, in the coming days, especially around the middle of next week. We'll turn very mild, but then probably drops back in around a week's time as we start pulling some colder air from the north and from the northeast. These are the 500 millibar high dominant flow charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top, and the GFS, which we're going to have a look at in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in absolute high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream, running above red 
extrapolates to high pressure blue to low pressure. We can see what the ECM is doing. It is uh, showing high pressure taking over above average heights there, sitting over to the east of the country. The only snag is that we're bringing in a bit of a cold, sort of easterly type flow. Um, still lots of low pressure to our north, so certainly up to day 10, the polar vortex is still well and truly in business, but the only difference there is that the jet stream is pushing northwards, there's ridges uh, building across the northwest parts of Europe, and um, so we're turning significantly drier, definitely, trough over Spain, by the way, so uh, they could turn very wet under that trough, but we're turning significantly drier there in uh, in around te a week, 10 days' time, but it could be a little bit on the cold side, with winds coming in uh, from the east. This is how the GFS is looking. It's very similar, actually, below average heights to our south, low pressure out towards Greenland, and then we've got this blocking area of high pressure sitting over, and just a little bit to our north, northeast, and yes, probably pulling in quite cold winds from an east to a uh, northeasterly direction. They both show high pressure taking over, so the second half of March is settling down, as we always anticipated it would. We said the first half of March was likely to be very unsettled. The second half of March should have more anticyclonic influences, turning drier, therefore, end of the deluge in the second half of March. That's all on course, it's all going to plan. The only question is about where this ridge is sitting and will we pull in those cold winds from the northeast? The GFS ensemble certainly say that yes, we will. This is the uh, ensemble graph in terms of the upper air temperatures and precipitation ensembles for London from Old West to Central. Uh, so it certainly says we're going to get a cold interlude. It's reasonably mild, though, to start off with, up to sort of the second half of next week. It's generally mild, a bit of a dip in the temperature there, but overall pretty mild temperatures. But then as we come towards the latter stages of next week, and next weekend we see this real drop in the temperature that is as cold as the upper air temperatures have been at any point through the winter just gone so uh, we're probably going to pull in the coldest air that we have had um at any point through the winter but we've left behind and we're halfway through march of course at uh, that point but there we go that's the way the weather can work sometimes that's a very significant cold snap that's coming in there with a lot of those ensemble members taking the upper air temperature down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, and some of them going even lower than that, actually. Some of them going down to around minus 12 or minus 13 at 850 HPA. And then in the last week of March, we see a, a recovery in the upper air temperatures. They start to lift back towards the red line. They start to lift back towards the 30-year temperature average. So probably a short, sharp shock of cold air lasting maybe three or four days. And then the temperatures begin to recover. Precipitation-wise, much, much drier than it has been. Not totally dry, but uh, you can see there that it is very substantially drier than anything that we've seen for several weeks, if not months. So, much drier second half to March, as anticipated. The question is about the temperatures. Temperature anomaly from the 14th, 22nd of March is averaging a little bit below average now, really, for most parts of the UK and Ireland. These could train colder as well in the next few days. Precipitation anomaly is driving average. I haven't seen that many of them in the past few weeks, but the temperature anomaly from the 14th, 22nd of March is coming out drier than average in most parts of the country. Quite a change on what we've had for some time. That's how the GFS is looking for Tuesday. So on Tuesday, we've got high pressure, this will come by weekend forecast, of course, high pressure building to the south, low pressure to uh, the north. A cold front then drops southwards through the middle part of the week, uh, introducing cold air from the north. Winds swing into the northeast, as you can see from the isobars there, coming around this area of high pressure. And that Saturday, a week away, we are pulling in really quite cold air from the northeast. And there's the upper air temperature showing the minus 10 Celsius ice firm pushing through the country. Given the time of year, the fact that the sun's getting stronger and we've got a cold upper air temperature, that could be the trigger for some uh, snow showers across eastern coastal areas in a week's time. And then the high pressure is sort of sinking down across the country, still with cold upper air temperatures. Um, most places probably dry here as we're moving up towards day 10, but it is cold and there will be significant night frost, definitely, uh, with that. That's day 10, the high pressure is still in control, just to our east 
uh, around day 10. Beyond that, the high pressure begins to slip further eastwards. We start to draw up a milder southerly. So as you go into the last week of March, temperatures turn milder for a while. But there we are again, 28th of March, the suggestion that ridge, uh, a ridge is beginning to build out to our north and west again. Possibly having a go at putting in some colder east winds once more. Uh, the GM looks like that. So again, high pressure ridging to the south on Tuesday, still unsettled up in the north. Then we drop that cold front down across the country through the second half next week and introduce a colder north to north easterly wind. Then the highest pressure sort of sits over the country uh, next weekend, bringing a lot of dry but quite cold weather. Less of the northeasterly influence, though, with that high pressure compared to what the uh, GFS is showing. I and mean, as we get towards day 10, we're starting to reintroduce a rather milder west south westerly once more. ECM, again, the high pressure is to the south on Tuesday, the low pressure to the north and west. We've got to drive over to England, Wales, rain, Scotland, to Northern Ireland. Midweek, we drop that cold front southwards, Wednesday into Thursday. The winds turn into the north, we draw down cold northerly winds. There'll be quite harsh night frost, certainly for the second half of March. And um, a little bit of a northeasterly north tilt to the wind for England, anyway, uh, on Saturday. 21st of March. Upper air temperatures looking cold, certainly cold enough if there are showers around for them to fall asleep. It's just a question of how much precipitation there is. This will probably be quite a dry air mass, so I wouldn't anticipate a lot of showers, but there could be some snow showers around, especially as the wind begins to turn easterly there on Sunday, 22nd of March. That could definitely drag in some snow showers to the southeastern corner. Upper air temperatures still look pretty cold. Uh, and many more extend range up towards day 10. We start to turn things milder again. You can see that the upper air temperatures then begin to lift up. So it's around four days, I think, three to four days of that really quite cold uh, northeasterly and eventually perhaps easterly winds. And then we go back into something milder as we move into the last week of uh, of March. These are options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the 24th of March, coming from the Icelandic Met Office. 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our northeast over Scandinavia and bringing in easterly winds. 12 with high pressure over Scandinavia and ridging through the UK. Lots of dry weather there and uh, a bit milder as well. Uh, 11 with high pressure more or less over the top of the country. And then 10 with high pressure again more or less over the country. All roads lead to high pressure at day 10. So a lot of dry weather on offer with those. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 29th of March. And we have 23 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to our north. And we're bringing in an easterly wind. Uh, 15 with high pressure again to the north. A little bit further north though with these. Low pressure to the southeast, probably bringing in winds from an east to north east direction. And then 13 with a bit of a bit of a mid Atlantic ridge, probably bring down a rather chilly uh, northwesterly. Again, it looks like most of the options are leading towards dry weather as we come to the closing days of March. But the question mark remains about the temperature. Will it be spring like or will it be uh, rather wintry? Finally, the CFSB2. So these are 500 millibar heights break down to week periods. The first week period takes us from the 14th to the 20th of March, the coming week with the below average heights to the north, above average heights building both to the east and to the west of us, jet stream drifting northwards. We're gradually going into a more anti cyclonic and less unsettled scenario. Week 2 is 21st, 27th of March. The high pressure is in over Scandinavia then. And we're probably drawing in an easterly wind. So that looks like it could be quite cold. Maybe even a little bit of wintry potential there. Week 3 is the 28th of March to the 3rd of April. With above average heights then to our west. But also ridging into the UK. Winds are like flat westerly. So, um... Probably uh, staying relatively dry there and a bit of a recovery in temperature taking place. Then week four is the 4th to the 10th of April with below average heights out to the northwest and probably starting to bring in more unsettled conditions again from off the Atlantic. We'd have to wait and see about that. 
Uh, finally, if you're enjoying the videos at the moment, please can you consider becoming a patron for Gaz Rabbit's system, Gaz Rabbit's Patreon page. Uh, we've got 63 patrons uh, so far, so hello and a big thank you to our 63 patrons. We very much hope you are enjoying the content that we're producing at the moment. If you would like to become a patron for Gaz Rabbit's, to give us an ongoing monthly donation. It can be anything from $1 a month upwards. All you need to do is come to the Gaz Rabbit's Patreon page, sign up for a Patreon account and then give an ongoing donation to Gazwebbies. By doing that, you become a patron for Gazwebbies.com and we shall give you a mention in videos and say thank you so much uh, for doing that. Alternatively, you can give a donation through PayPal. So, this is Gazwebbies PayPal page. You just come here and sign in to your PayPal account and then give whatever donation you would like. This one also works in pounds sterling, of course. Um, then give whatever whatever donation you would like, and uh, then you're going to get a mention in videos as long as you want to. Well, a few people have chosen to stay anonymous. That's fine. No problem with that. If you'd like to stay anonymous, um, just let us know uh, with a little note when you make your donation. You get an email back anyway, and we'll check that you want to mention. Um, but uh, it's perfectly fine if you'd rather not have mentioned. We'll just say thank you to this anonymous person. But otherwise, we'll give you mention in videos. Say thank you very much. You might want to mention for your website, for your business. You might want to shout out somebody else, like a birthday uh, greeting or something. However you want that mention, it's absolutely fine. Uh, just let us know when you make your donation or when you sign up to uh, Patreon. And, of course, you're having us to pay for the website. You're having us to pay for gasworthies.com and uh, helping us to keep the content online. Um, so a big, big thank you to everybody for doing that. We're primarily ads funded, uh, and we're going to remain um, free for everybody to uh, see videos and see the content uh, as they want it and need it. Um, but ad revenues over, the, over time, and particularly at the moment with the coronavirus uh, thing having big impacts on the economy, um, ad revenues are dropping quite uh, significantly actually at the moment, quite dramatically so. Uh, and uh, so extra revenue streams are very helpful, uh, in, in particularly in terms of Patreon and also uh, PayPal to keep the content online and keep the website going. So a big, big thank you to all of you for doing that and a special thank you, of course, to our donors that we've had so far. Been huge successes since we started it in June 2018. Can't believe it's that long ago, but it's been a huge success in the nearly two years we've been uh, doing this. So, big thank you to all of our donors so far, and of course, big thank you to all of our patrons as well. Right, that's it then uh, for today's uh, videos. Now, tomorrow, we've got some summer analogues coming up for you first thing. Uh, that'll be 10 a.m., Quite an interesting watch that because we're doing win winter to summer and we know we've had a very extreme winter not from cold but from uh, rain and also very mild uh, temperatures as well so we'll be looking at a bit of data about that what uh, summer's like that follow very um, mild and wet winters uh, and of course have Gaz Webby's Sunday Roundup for you also so that should be uh, a pretty interesting watch I would have thought uh, that'd be after lunch or around or after lunch tomorrow uh but for today's videos that's all for now and thanks for watching